Hello, viewers. Uh, we're coming live from uh, MS Rama in Naran Hidayalaya, and uh, I, it's my privilege to be interviewing Dr. Anupama Hegde, who has more than 10 years' experience in the field of interventional cardiology and has more than 2,000 interventional procedures under her name. Thank you so much, ma'am, for coming on Thank our program. Hello, uh, viewers. Um, madam, what is a heart attack? The heart attack or acute myocardial infarction occurs because of the 100% blockage of the blood vessels supplied to the heart. This may be because of the clot formation or because of platelet plug. When there is occlusion of the blood vessel, there is cutoff of the oxygen supply to the heart along with the blood supply. So the heart muscle dam suffer suffers a damage and this is called heart attack. Okay. Uh, so what are the risk factors for uh, this heart attack? See the common risk factors are age, advanced age, male sex, smoking, diabetes, hypertension, postmenopausal state, use of oral contraceptive pills, that is a misuse of oral contraceptive pills. So these are the few risk factors, along with uncontrolled high cholesterol levels or dyslipidemia. Okay. Okay. So what are the symptoms uh, with which a person can come with a heart attack? The most common symptoms they come with is chest pain in the center part of the chest, crushing type, associated with sweating, difficulty in breathing, or sometimes pain radiating to the jaw, the back, or both the shoulders. Sometimes there can be atypical presentations like only sweating, vomiting sensation, or epigastric discomfort, okay. which is more common so in diabetics and female patients. Is it possible to have a heart attack without a chest pain or anything? Yes, symptoms? it is possible. This is called silent heart attack. Okay. It's more so common in female patients okay. and diabetics. So if so, how would we make out? So the only symptoms, see, the patients would have had history of some vague fatigability or tiredness they would have difficulty in breathing. They would not be able to do their work as they were doing before, or some palpitations, some retrosternal burning, or burning inside the heart chest. Okay. So these are the symptoms which are indicative probably of a silent heart attack. Okay. So what could be a complication of a heart attack? So the, complica the common complications usually is death. 10% <laughs> of the patients may not leave the hospital with acute heart attack because if they are not diagnosed and they don't, the heart muscle doesn't give time for them to reach the hospital. The occlusion is made in the major vessel, so the supply is cut off, so they don't reach the hospital. The other complications include reduction in blood pressure, irregularity in heartbeats, then difficulty in breathing or the heart failure, congestion in the lungs. These are some of the features. Okay. And if the presentation is delayed, so they can have other complications like the heart muscle giving way, which you call as rupture. So what do you mean by heart failure, madam, if I am... Heart yeah. failure means, well, see, the heart is a muscle. It is a conical structure. So it has to pump adequately to send the blood to all the various blood vessels of the uh, body. Okay. So once there is damage, it cannot contract or relax. That is, it cannot shrink or relax, open adequately, so to allow the blood entry and exit. So when this occurs, there is increase in the pressure in the heart. So this increase in pressure causes raise in back pressure and causes flooding in the lungs. This is what we call as heart failure, basically in colloquial terms. Okay. <coughs> so what are the uh, treatment options available for a person who's come in with a heart failure? See, it depends Come on in with a heart attack, I mean, yeah. I'm sorry. When the patient comes with a heart attack, if they have reached the hospital in the first two hours to six hours, which is called the golden period, you have two options. Either we can give injections called fibrinolytics or thrombolytics, which allows dissolution of the clot and improve in the circulation. But the best option is to undergo immediate angiogram, which tells us where exactly is the blockage, and to undergo stenting, either it's angioplasty. So this assures that 100% restoration of circulation. And persons coming with to the hospital, even up to 12 to 24 hours, can undergo emergency angioplasty as a life-saving procedure. And are there any medicines that the patient has to take even after the procedure? Or yes, which we call the aspirin. Okay. Then other drugs called clopidogrel or ticagrel or along with blood pressure lowering drugs, cholesterol lowering drugs. These are the mandatory drugs which they take lifelong. Okay. Also, if they are diabetics, they need to go take good control of the diabetes. So okay. either they have to take the medical tablets or insulin, depending on the advice of the doctors. Okay. And how long should they continue this uh, aspirin and clopidogrel? It is preferable to continue both the drugs lifelong. 
Okay, so it is not good to discontinue yes. the drug after that. See, attack. once you discontinue, the thrombus formation can re occur, the clot formation can re occur mm -hmm. in the state okay. and cause a fresh heart attack, which can be more life threatening. Okay. Even if the patient has had no symptoms or any problem for yes. more than five years, should he really continue? Should he really continue because these symptoms can come in any time. Okay. Um, is there any uh, lifestyle modification that can prevent or improve uh, a heart attack? Yes, if you are overweight, bring it on your weight. If you know that you have high cholesterol levels, control your cholesterol levels. Cut, keep your blood sugar well under control. Blood pressure is a normal range. And have healthy diet. That is preferable to have a lot of fresh vegetables and fruits in your diet. Okay. And non-vegetarian food in moderation. Okay. okay. And if you are a smoker, quit smoking. And alcohol also has a detrimental effect on heart. So though we say social drinking occasionally is fine, but still any amount of alcohol can be damaging to the heart. So if you can quit all this, correct your diet, correct your lifestyle, and if you're a sedentary person, get into the habit of exercising. All this can bring down the risk of heart attack. So what could be the exercise regimen for a person uh, after a heart attack? See, usually when they are in the hospital, they start getting ambulated or they are made to walk around. The first week will be light walk or climbing up and down those few steps. Okay? Okay. Then with each week, the intensity of exercise is increased. So we tell them every week, increase your exercise by 5 to 10 minutes, like walking okay. distance. First go on a slope, uh, fly on a flat surface, then gradually you can go on inclination. Okay. And climbing up and down the staircase, we say avoid for 2 to 3 weeks frequent climbing up and down. Okay. Once or twice you go up one flight of stairs slowly and come down, it's fine. Once your heart recovers, then you can go up to a normal level of activity. Okay. Uh, so is it, uh, is it useful to do yoga for the heart? Yes. See, now there are some regimens with yoga. So if taught by a properly educated, trained person, a physiotherapist, yoga is beneficial. The breathing exercise, the meditation, Few of the asanas are helpful in patients to recover. Okay. But most like uh, Shirsa asana and all, we don't recommend. Okay. And why would that be? See, when the <coughs> patients hear it is more strenuous on the heart because okay. the person has to tilt himself upside down. Okay. So the compromise of circulation occurs. The more of circulation enters the brain, the heart again gets compromised. Okay. And doing getting into that portion itself is strenuous. Their oxygen demand is high. The heart rate goes up. So heart suffers, suffers a lot of stress. Okay. So we don't recommend these exercises for them. Okay. So what is an angioplasty, madam, if you can tell See, us? See, angioplasty is a procedure wherein either through uh, access in the wrist, vessel, blood vessel the wrist, or through the groin or the femoral artery, we put in a small needle, can add a cannula, through that we pass in a catheter. The catheter hooks to the blood vessel supply of the heart. Through that we pass in a wire to cross the blockage. And over that we cross a balloon, at, and put it at the side where there is blockage and okay. open it up. So that establishes circulation. But once you remove the balloon, there is a chance that it can re -upload. To prevent that, <laughs> we put in a stent. That is called angioplasty. And uh, after a heart attack, how long uh, should we, uh, how, how long should we really take for the angioplasty to be done? See, usually the window period, the golden period is between two to six hours. Okay. Okay. So if the person still reaches the hospital after 6 hours, even up to 24 hours, the chances of recovery are high. Okay. But the earlier the better? Earlier the better. The okay. more you delay, the more amount of damage occurs to the heart. So you get it, tend to get into more complications. Okay. And how long does this angioplasty procedure usually last? Usually it takes, this procedure takes about 45 minutes to 1 and a half hours, depending okay. on the anatomy of the heart, when blood vessels. Are there any complications associated with this usually angioplasty? The Complications associated with the procedure is less than one to two percent. Okay. okay, that is most of the time it may be some vague allergic reaction. But if the person comes in late, because okay. of the delay, there will be drop in the blood pressure. The su success rate also starts coming down. It is okay. not because of the procedure failure, but because the clots are more aggressive. Okay. That is, they are more stubborn. <coughs> you cannot clear them easily. Okay. So the procedural complications goes high. So the earlier the angioplasty you get done after heart better. attack is the better. Uh, can you tell me, madam, uh, what is the benefit of uh, good sugar control in a, in a patient with See, heart attack? Uh, when the sugar levels are high, 
it forms poisonous substance in the body called oxygenated bodies. Okay. This has a detrimental effect on the heart. So it causes damage to the blood vessel of the heart as well as the heart muscles. Okay. So when there's a damage to the blood cells, blood vessel cells, it tends to deposit co more cholesterol easily. And also it starts to shrink easily. So this causes a compromise of the blood circulation. Okay. So to prevent that, good blood, uh, blood sugar control is required. Good diabetic control is very important to prevent heart attack as well as post heart attack status. Uh, can you tell me, madam, uh, how is uh, how are Indians different from the Western population? Is it See, the same? Uh, when it comes as to compared attack? to Western population, unfortunately, we are seeing heart attack in very young patients in India. So most of the patients who develop heart attack are less than 40 years, and they are in the productive phase of life. Okay. So the most productive years are lost because of heart attack. Okay. And that is because one is the lifestyle changes as which has occurred. We are trying to imitate the wrong things of the Westerners, like taking a lot of junk food, become more sedentary, and obesity is increasing. There's increase in incidence of diabetes in India. Mm -hmm. So all these are making us to get heart attack at a younger okay. age. Just as a curiosity, what is the youngest patient with heart attack that you've had? I have seen about 18 years old. 18 years yes. old. That is pretty young. Also, uh, recently I was seeing one data where uh, they said Bangalore uh, IT industry is losing about 3.5 billion dollars every year because of this lifestyle uh, diseases. Yeah, because most of the IT people they are under stress okay. and they lack exercise. See, they are made to work from morning till night and they are all target oriented. Okay. And they are prone to become like a type A person wherein they become short tempered, they are aggressive, they become, they want to achieve targets very fast, they want to reach the top very fast. Okay. So all this causes a lot of increase in the heart rate, the surges in blood pressure, all these are detrimental. Okay. Plus, because most of the time they spend in the ho office, okay. they tend to eat a lot of junk food, drink a lot of coffee and tea, so the lot of refined sugars intake is increasing. Okay. And they're becoming obese because no activity. Okay. The most of the time they're sedentary. So all these are increasing the risk in that. Okay. Uh, so what do you think of the diet? Uh, what what would you recommend the diet to be see, in heart attack? the best diet is what your elders were taking okay, okay? so your elders were taking healthy diet with lot of fresh fruits and vegetables and they were having the unpolished grains and they were okay. also working hard okay okay so though they were, they were consuming a lot of milk ghee and butter but to digest that their level of activity is high okay okay and their lifestyle was better in the sense they didn't have so much stress they used to spend more time with other family members. They used to take time off to relax. So daytime, they used to work hard. When they had to work, they used to work. But at the same time, they used to take some time for off for relaxation. Okay. What do you think of a non-vegetarian diet versus a vegetarian diet? A non-vegetarian diet? diet, if taken in moderation, is okay. Okay. But what happens is nowadays, people tend to take in more deep fried items in non-vegetarian, okay. with a lot of spices added and all that. Okay. And more of stored food. Okay. Where then they add a lot of preservatives. Okay. So which are all harmful. Okay. okay. Freshly prepared, taken in moderation, cooked or steamed is better than deep fried. Okay. And that to fish is better. It is more health cardioprotective or protection has protection on the heart organs. So uh, red meat. Red would meat be is not definitely not good, but if you have to take in, take in very minimal quantity. Okay. So avoid red meat or take it in moderation. moderation. So what do you think of processed food? Processed food, again, because of the high salt and the preservatives of a lot of chemicals, we don't know what they are. They have been, been having detrimental effects. So they're causing increase in blood pressure, high cholesterol, and also the diabetes goes up because there are a lot of refined sugars in the processed food. Okay. Uh, I mean, we've touched upon this, but I would like to ask again because I, I think it's a very popular question which is, uh, what about alcohol intake? How much is okay? See, alcohol in any level can cause detrimental effect. Okay. But still, if you're forced to, or probably social drinking, limited to less than 60 ml or 90 ml, okay. soft alcohol is better. Okay. And is it the same for men and women? No, women, they should be taking a little lower quantity. Okay. They say for women, it's preferred to restrict less than 60 ml, okay. men to 90 ml. Okay. What about smoking, ma'am? Smoking definitely has def detrimental. It not only smoking. Uh -huh. There is a misconception that 
chewing tobacco doesn't can only cancer, but chewing tobacco or inhaling tobacco in any form is also as harmful as smoking. Okay. Because smoking itself can cause narrowing of the blood vessels of the heart. The same way any tobacco can cause. Okay. And even passive smoking can be detrimental. Okay, passive smoking. So uh, tobacco in any form is dangerous yes. for heart attack. Uh, can you also tell me uh, what, how often do you have to come for a checkup after heart attack? So usually the first checkup will be within 10 to 2 weeks of discharge after angioplasty or heart attack. Then the next will be about a month later of this thing. Then subsequently once in 2 to 3 months depending on the patient's recovery. Okay. Once they stabilize for about a year, then it can be once in 6 months or a year depending on how they have recovered. Okay. Uh, uh, finally, two more questions, madam. Uh, what is uh, cholesterol and how does it... Uh See, cholesterol is a natural metabolite which occurs in our body. Okay. Okay. There is called good cholesterol, bad cholesterol. We have the good cholesterol are HDL, the high density lipoprotein, which has less of fat content in it. Okay. Okay. The other cholesterols like the general cholesterol, the low density lipoprotein and all other rich in unhealthy fat. Okay. So these are all called bad cholesterol. So how do we avoid uh, having so a high one cholesterol? Is diet, okay. exercise, then medications. If diet regimen and exercise regimen does not work for three to four months, then you need to go on medications. Finally, to my last question, madam, uh, how do we prevent heart attacks? See, certain risk factors like genetic factors cannot be modified. But the secondary risk factors like smoking, alcoholism, Diabetes, hypertension, by controlling them, cessation of smoking, stop alcohol, in, inadequate intake or excessive intake of alcohol, then lifestyle, like prevent a sedentary lifestyle, you go on as an exercise, okay. reduce your weight, go on healthy diet with fresh fruits and vegetables, then control your diabetes and blood pressure as well. With this, you can prevent occurrence of heart attack to a large extent. So any person who's, uh, who's, not, who's, uh, uh, who's has a sedentary lifestyle but still has not developed any heart issues, does yes. he still have time? Yes, to definitely. Have. Any time you start, whatever amount of exercise you do, will all have beneficial effect. It is going to have a cumulative effect. Thank you so much, madam. Thank you so much for Thank spending you. time with us. And uh, this concludes our session with Dr. Anupama Hegde. Uh, keep watching and uh, also write in to us if you have any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you.